and welcome to the 18th edition of the Indie Music Plus podcast. I am Jojo Keys, sitting here with Mr. Hotshot Granny Panties, David Werba. <laughs> yeah, that's these things right there. Nobody really knows what they are, but uh, people seem to think it's Granny Panties because, like you've heard in past episodes, I've been swimming laps at the pool and there's like a lot of, you know, older women that have been hovering around me. And uh, maybe one of them left those right there at my place. But go ahead, Joe, please. So have you, uh, my biggest question is, have you uh, went back to visit the uh, fan club at your old place of old ladies? No, it's, it's been an emotional week uh, having to leave that scene because as you can see my background, it's real. This is my new place. And that's also why we were unable to do a show last week. Um, so we're, we're back into the rhythm that we're comfortable with. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So last week I had a co-host lined up and unfortunately he had to back out last minute and I just uh, was not in the mood to do it by myself. So I just decided to skip it So because it's just not the same without you, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I hear you. I feel you. I feel you, dog. I'm here for you. But seriously, though, we have gotten into a nice groove. I think you started with me at like episode five. My wife was helping me out before that. And she just, you know, she's not really into it. Um, she was doing a great job, but you know, you decided to come along and it's just been a lot of fun ever since then. So uh, here we go. I'm excited, you're excited. The room is excited. The There's business a- is growing. Yeah. Huge, it's enormous. You know, yeah. it's, it's making like what? What did we make about five hundred thousand dollars last month? It allowed me oh. to buy this new condo. I don't, you know, <laughs> roughly, maybe a little less, but around there. Another thing I'm wondering is where's your little uh, character that's always right above your shoulder? My character. No. Oh, oh god, character? yeah, he, uh, he is somewhere beyond the camera right now. But <laughs> no, speaking of our website and our growing business we actually Mm -hmm. we're gonna start doing something new pretty soon i'm actually been working on the new uh blog post today and it's called the artist word because we've been doing uh featured artists who've been reviewing artists like with critiques um with articles and blog posts we've done a little music business articles but we're, we're gonna let actually not let let's enable empower artists to write their own blogs and we're going to share it just like we share everything else and we're going to be putting the first one up in the next few days uh by ridley victoria which is a a past uh, review that we did and it's awesome like it's real it's raw and yeah so go ahead she was our first featured artist uh, of the year Mm -hmm. actually yeah based in chicago and she's a poet and uh, she does, you know, the hip hop rap thing, but she's also a singer and, and uh, she's just came out with a new EP. She's really, really good. So, so I just happened to like run across her. She does Snapchat um, and I was snapping with her the other night and chatting with her. And I was just, you know, asked her randomly if she'd like to do some guest blogging because we're kind of feeling the waters out. And it was like literally 10 minutes later, I had a 500 word blog in my email and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, th- and that was cool. It just shows yeah. like, it's like it was, these it artists. Was, it was yeah. like value, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it, it was good. And uh, I was just editing it right now. I'm like, this is like real life indie artist experience, what she's going through in her career. She's young. I think she's yeah. like 21-ish. Early that right? 20. Yeah, yeah, early 20s. 20, uh, 23, something like that. Yeah, she had moved to LA, then moved back to Chicago, and she's kind of found her groove and got a new album, and she's just kind of writing about where she's at in her career. And, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to open that up to uh, other artists because if, I mean, we encourage people to have their own website and blog and everything, but having it kind of hosted and featured on our platform will enable the artist to just reach so many because it like her article will get at least a few hundred views maybe even a few thousand if it kind of picks up some steam through social media so that's what artists when they want to write about their own experience if it's on their own blog where they maybe have like 10 visitors not that many people are going to read it but you know 
kind of guest blogging on our platform is going to reach a lot more people. And, and then also we're going to try and just continue to bring more guest critics in as part of this whole like guest blogging initiative. But, um, yeah, let's get into some music, man. Yeah, man. I got a surprise for you, Joe. I forgot to tell you, man. I got a candle going right now. Look at that. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Walmart? Walmart? I mean, come give me a break. I mean, Target, man. Come on. Oh, you're the you're the fancy uh, department store shopper. (laughs) Yeah, I got a glass of wine. Hopefully, I don't mix these up and burn my nose. Well, let's see. Let's uh, let's have you pick. Who would you like to listen to first? Oh, I always pick the order. Yeah, that's true. Let's go with let's go with Ninth Floor Mannequin. Okay, sounds good. So this is going to be our featured artist for this this week uh, that we're doing the podcast. So you can check it out uh, on the website. Uh, this guy has quite the story. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it after we listen to his song "Absences." This is uh, his name is Jared, uh, but he goes by the name Ninth Floor Mannequin. podcast episode 18 with mr granny pants david werba <laughs> um you know i can't let a bad joke go for that's all right no you're you're the king the king of the bad jo- you're so good at the bad jokes that it's actually funny <laughs> yeah that's what people get to know about me it's like uh you know i teach piano and I have like all ages of of kids and stuff and adults too, but like with the kids in particular, um, some of them look at me kind of weird when I like, you know, let my kind of my humor fly. And uh, I know we're gonna have a good relationship when they get it (laughs) right off the bat. So anyway, enough about that. I, let me see, like you threw this one at me at 11th hour and we, we fought about it. We argued over the phone. I was so pissed that you just did it last second. And, uh, but anyway, it was, it reminded me of, uh, an urge overkill song from Pulp Fiction. Um, just oh, in sure. the beginning, just, just for a sec. I mean, not, not as much, uh, distortion and everything. Not oh, as hard. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I have that album that that song is on and it's great. Like it's an EP. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I loved this song and I was, uh, just like another song that's coming up that I could probably expand more on, but um, yeah, this was man, God, I I, I love this style. It's just kind of like a airy distortion, kind of a avant rock type of style, and uh, just super cool. I mean, wh- what do you think, man? Well, I was gonna tell you about his um, his story, like <laughs> I. I remember looking at his bio when he submitted and it was after we had or had like when people submit i'd put it in a folder and sort of tuck it away until you know i go through submissions like whenever i whenever it comes time for us to need more featured artists or when it's time for me to go through submissions to get featured artists 
I'll go through them. And I immediately rem- remember his song we put on the podcast. And it was something about he put together in, his, in the folder that I put there. It was something that he'd submitted saying that he had written a story or written something about his experience. And I really didn't look at it. We did the, we did the interview and you'll see. He talks about he was hit by a car while he was running and he doesn't remember anything and he's like still recovering from it hmm he's in the hospital for a long time he even said i think that um something about the lawyer um he can't get any money from the guy that i hit him or anything like that so i mean this guy like has quite the story and i really enjoyed talking with him because he was you know he's unique he has a very yeah, unique was very, I remember he just kind of caught me off guard when we were talking, and I was just kind of like, <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's pretty heavy, huh? I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, whatever the story is, what, you know, the music that came out of it was pretty awesome. So. Yeah, I'm saying. I really like the music, and um, that's why we're featuring him, so good stuff. Awesome. Who do we have next, man? Let's see here. Well, who would you like next? That's the question. Yeah, we're going to go with... Uh, let's jump into John Favicchia. Ah, New York legend. Incidents with John what? John Favicchia. Thank you very much. John, John Favicchia. Favicchia. Uh, based in New York, he plays with so many people. I mean, people are dying to play with him, as you can hear. I mean, that was a song he wrote right there. Um, I mean, he puts on uh, clinics. You know, he tours around. I mean, he, man, I like he's, he's amazing. Like, his... Yeah. Like as a drummer, I mean, when I when I think of like my like top three drummers, like Neil Peart from Rush and Carter Buford from Dave Matthews Band, I mean he's got that skill. And uh, I add on top of that, I love jazz fusion. That that's like way way up there in terms of genres of music that I love to listen to. And man, he's so tight, man. It's like just the rolls and you know the snare work and the the cymbal work. I. That was I loved it. I mean, you you wrote the review on this guy. So what? Well, this, what do you think? I mean, yeah, this is the I've played with um, something I didn't mention in the review, but I played with a couple of drummers like his style that is you know comparable to his style, and it's always been my favorite type of people to play with. Then the genre I was playing with the men, they didn't need to quite play as fancy as they did, but it was always fun. To listen to um and there's one guy in particular that we worked with <laughs> we we were uh, kind of partying a lot back then so and he didn't really party so we'd be like drum solo and like 20 minutes later we'd come back up three <laughs> three shots later yeah, drum solo good job dude then start back <laughs> up the song again or whatever but yeah. um those drummers like are just you know those type of drummers um 
I love listening to. It's just yeah. The, the drumming was uh, what I should have done. So it's just so much fun to listen to guys that know what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, you can tell he has the chops to like even probably play in a more elaborate way where it kind of took over the music where people forget about the music. But I mean, I, I just think he's that good where he like he holds back just enough to make it work with the music. And yeah, yeah that was yeah, I, I just encourage people to check out his other stuff because I mean, it, that's as tight as it gets right there. Yeah, that's about as uh, top notch as you get, you know, whether you like jazz or not, you know, it's a uh, good, good drummer right there. All right, so let's move on to Jennifer Scott. Jennifer Scott. So we have Jennifer Scott, and this is her, I really don't know how to say this. Can you help me out with this? I'm horrible with this stuff. Uh, I don't know French, but I'll take a chance. It's like, le thème de l'amour. <laughs> Try and repeat the name of the song, but it was, it was Jennifer Scott. Um, I'm not a French music connoisseur, um, but I, the only there's one word that came into my mind when I was listening to this, and it was pleasant. It was pleasant. It was it was nice. It was very simple, like simplistic, like the instrumentation. Um, the the vocals I, I i don't know like i don't know the genre well enough to expand too much on this but uh, it it kind of just maybe a touch pitchy like just with the vocals sometimes i mean uh but like it was nice like it, it was it, i just kind of when i was listening I, I put myself like i was in a in a movie or something and there was just it was like a french uh like three minute you know montage where people were passing through France and that was playing in the background and just to kind of give the flavor of a scene in a movie or something. I I mean, what do you, what do you think? Like you, you did a full review on, well, on the more music, I've right? To it, yeah, like the more I've listened to it. So she was trained by concert, well, two concert pianists, I believe, which are classically trained. And she's classically trained. So when classically trained people try to play jazz, it seems a little bit yeah. forced. You know what I mean? And I noticed in her songs, there's no solos necessarily that right. I heard. And right. I listen to every minute of every everything because I just don't have time for that. But um, it, you know, so there wasn't any solos or anything like that. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It's not horrible. I, I mean, I like. No, the, no. I it's like just like it's like super it's like simple jazz and it's like i it, it's just one of those taste things it's like like well, i i'm so attracted to like free form acid jazz like where it's just kind of sure. going off that's like just straight. my brain like is drawn to that and uh but but for what it is like for what that song is um it's nice you know and yeah, it, yeah. i yeah i enjoyed it 
<laughs> All right, so next tune, Joe. What let's go doing? with let's go with We Are Medic. Okay, so that's their handle, but uh, the name of the band is Medic. Medic. Oh, and this is their song, Room to Run. That song was by Medic. It, I'm just going to jump it. Joe, I'm going to take this, man. That was amazing. Uh, it reminded me of some type of mix between like Nine Inch Nails and Muse. Just that dynamic, yeah. just this like up and down. I love that. You know, it, it's like it, it plays with your feeling. It's not just this consistent, like, straight line that a lot of songs like to take where there's no change in tone and there's no change in dynamic like i lose focus in those songs mm -hmm. like this one it, it just grabs you and it it almost like to me it like just forces you to listen closely it's like what's happening next and i loved it man i i just i loved it so much i, I wanna, like when we turn this show off i'm probably gonna go listen again <laughs> yeah, they had a, they have another cool story. Um, they like uh, didn't start writing music together until not too long ago, and all of a sudden they have this amazing music. And they took it. I don't remember exactly what it was. You'll have to check them out and see if you can find it. Um, but they had like uh, a really unique story about how they wrote the music and how they put it together. They like wanted to be the best rock band ever or something like that. But I think they're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that that's one of those uh, songs in the class that we've talked about in the past where it's just, it, it, like if you heard on the radio in a movie, like anywhere, you you just start being like, wow, cool song. Yeah. Totally. That's what just blows my mind about this whole in, like indie music industry. It's like, yeah, these they aren't there and they should be. And that's what I love to promote and highlight in our podcast is because these songs are everywhere. And I the mean, the variety they, yeah. we get, man, is just blowing my mind. It's like all the way from beginners, you know, to, uh, oh, no, no, no. whoops, sorry about that, to, uh, you know people like this who have all this yeah. stuff going so yeah yeah all right so that's going to wrap up the 18th episode of the indie music plus podcast as always right after the podcast we're going to head over to our musicians round table if anybody's a musician make sure you join us on sunday evenings around 9 45 ish thank you for joining us i'm jojo keys that's mr granny pants david orba with his brand new candle from Tarjay. <laughs> we'll see you next week.